Thanks for your support as a channel member, Nathan Curry. I don't usually cross promote my two series, but today there is a good reason to because tomorrow the Bourne series is being relaunched. It's being reset back to an episode one. It's going to be called born again did you see what i did there and uh, we finally re spoilers if you've not been watching it we finally reached tier six the normal starting point of the save and i know a lot of people have fallen off that save because the journey from tier 10 to tier six has not been as interesting as we thought it might be it's involved a lot of winning and a lot of turnover of players but that all changes now we're back to a normal starting point so if you have fallen off that series i urge you to give it a try again tomorrow because you will see us having a bit more of a challenge with much more of a settled team and we can we'll just consider it starting again from there those of you who've been enjoying it so far obviously thank you for enjoying it so far it just continues for you we're not restarting anything um, I'm just redoing the numbering as a rascally social media trick to convince you all to come back and give it another try because it's going to be awesome from tomorrow, I promise. Welcome to Club 3, part 23 of Nod Me to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have two games in the Premier League. We're away against Watford and at home against West Ham. Since you were last with me, this is what we've been up to. Um, we've, uh, we've, where did we get to? Oh. Hold on. Well, I, it's a week since I've recorded any kind of videos. If there is a little bit of an echo on the video, it's because I'm redoing my office. I, I'm redoing the garage. Um, but at the moment, we're in a slight... I'm talking into a wall, and it's. I can hear the audio bouncing back a little bit. I hope it's not too bad for you. I'll try and clean it up in post. I have got, I have got some... Uh, sound panels arriving today from Amazon but if I didn't do this video now it wouldn't be out in time so if it is a little echoey bear with me it'll be fine again from tomorrow um it's just I had to I ran out I had ran out of time I wasn't supposed to tell you that now I was saving that for later in the video but that explains why I don't know where we got to so oh yes we lost to Liverpool we got battered didn't we well since then um you can see we started to pick up a li I wouldn't say form it's still not form but there are three Premier League wins in there plus a little bit of a cup run forming so I think we're we're starting to look like a lower mid-table Premier League team which I think is where we all I wouldn't say expected, but hoped we'd end up this season. Um, so we're currently in 13th place, 10 points from our first eight games. Obviously, a much better situation than we were in last year. And as far as the board are concerned, they're just looking for us to survive again. Um, so the job is uh, fight bravely against relegation. They're not even going to sack me if we go down. So as far as I'm concerned, it's a, it's a charge to 40 points and then see where we end up from there. But if we carry on uh, in the in the form that we've been in so far, we could find ourselves on 40 points by not long after Christmas, which would obviously be awesome. Uh, so this is this is the game. Anyway, this is the team. We've, this is the team that we're playing against Watford. We're not very good away from home. We're a little bit better at home. So I imagine we'll probably lose this game, but hopefully we'll win the other one. Um, who is the other one against? Have we got any? West, we could we could beat West Ham at home. Maybe. Um, we've got Hilson in goal, a back four of Pierre, Diaby, Tanganga and Williams, Gudja and Mowat in midfield. Um, I know Gudja was signed to be my attacking midfielder, uh, but one thing I have noticed about my squad, slightly unbalanced because of the new players that I've brought in. Um, I didn't really have a really good box-to-box -box midfielder. Well, it turns out Richard Gudja is a really good box-to-box -box midfielder. It does mean that um, the other midfielder that I brought in, whose name I can't remember, I want to say Stourbridge, but I don't think it is. Um, Stockbridge, um, who's currently suspended, um, he doesn't really fit into that midfield. He wants to play as uh, either the deep line playmaker, which Mowat does, or as an attacking central midfielder. So long term, I think this midfield might end up being Stockbridge and Gudja as Mowat starts to wind down his career um, with Barlow having the opportunity to establish himself further forward or maybe Tillman in that role like we had last season. Um, but yeah, at the moment, with the lack of McGee and, and Rinomata, although Rinomata's still here, but he's been injured, um, with the lack of those two as my natural box-to-box -box midfielders, um, there has been a vacancy which Goodge has filled in the last 
three or four games by dropping back. Um, let's just have a little look. Yeah, there you go. That's the, He started as the attacking midfielder and there's his slow transition into becoming our box-to-box -box midfielder. I mean, he was playing better as the attacking midfielder. Hmm interesting i've not yet decided on how to fit my new players together yet and we've then got denton barlow and Oco flex behind skook up front Oco flex currently i think our top scorer um actually starting to look like a bit of a a bit of an attacking threat this season what an improvement from a 6.53 to a 7.03 um four goals from seven starts so far one of them was i mean three of them were a hat trick um, but he's starting to look very threatening playing as the winger on that side with denton as the winger on the other side um, and then Skuck not quite finding his feet in the Premier League yet. Just the two goals from eight games. Uh, but Hornby's been injured. So that's why Skuck has been playing constantly. The other notable point about our season so far is we've had so many players sent off. Um, if we just go back to the Premier League, um, is there like a discipline table? I know it's got the yellow cards there. If we click on that, can we see? I want team they get red cards brandon williams already been sent off twice this season which is ridiculous we're eight games in and brandon williams has already been sent off twice um but he's not oh here you go look so brandon williams has been sent off twice so is denton so is peary so in our first eight games we've had four red cards we need to stop getting players sent off brandon williams needs to stop getting sent off the man is a lunatic he's started two premier league games this year and got sent off in both of them don't know what to do about him. Um, let's go and play a football match because, I, I mean, presumably Williams is suspended. I don't even remember. Um, yeah. Oh, no, he's injured now. So he's been suspended a lot and he's now injured. That I think we might need a new left back. I don't think he's going to be the answer. As awesome as he was last year, um, he, needs to, he needs to get his head sorted and stop being an absolute nut muffin. Um, right, we are the underdogs here because it's football manager and it's Watford. So we all know that means there's a good chance we're probably going to lose the football match. Uh, but hopefully... Hopefully we won't. I'm not suggesting there's any Watford favouring in this game. That would be wrong. Skuck has scored a fourth goal of the season for him. And I think a first assist for Barlow because Barlow has had a very slow start to life at Barnsley. Found it hard to really find a place in the team. I've been playing him out on the left wing quite a lot. This this might be his first start in his actual natural position as an attacking midfielder. So moving Gudger back might end up working out really well for Barlow, who might finally get to, to start more than a couple of games playing in his natural position. And we might actually get to see if he's any good or not. Because although he is a little bit older than some of the other ones at 25, he is another of our young English contingent, which is really what we're building this entire Barnsley team around, young English players. Because scuck aside, we haven't been able to bring in any foreigners yet because we can't can't bring in the really fancy ones and the other ones won't get work permits um hilson probably needed to do a little bit better there um from that from that attack he's kind of the shots come across him and he's palmed it into the path of the onrushing striker and can't help but think turn it around the post or keep hold of it do you really do you need to push it why do goalkeepers not just catch the ball anymore i know the answer is probably because there's always the risk you might drop it you might squirm out your hands whereas if you punch it clear or push it clear it's harder to mess up a punch or a push than it is a catch but i would love to see the statistics oh my word what is happening here oh my word what is happening here I mean, Hilson's rolled that behind him. But even worse than that is how panicked Tanganga got. I mean, why he's rolling that backwards, I don't know. But Tanganga does not know what to do there. He is absolutely baffled by the situation. Nowhere near as much as all of us are. I don't know that you put the blame on Hilson there at all. Yes, it's weird that he's rolling it backwards. But I think he's he has every right to expect tanganga to be able to cope with it um skuck is clear here though um he used a lot of pace there quicker than i expected him to be um but 
um, only forces the corner and it's Barlow to take again and corner comes over it's another decent one um, and he's uh, he's forced another corner I think it was Skuck or maybe Denton who uh, who were trying to get in on the action there but Barlow a two-hander this time which looks like it means near post didn't quite get Dwako Flex and um, but he has picked up the ball and there's Tanganga again who presumably is just going to panic with it no see I, how can he do that there but he can't do it in his own penalty area Williams ball over the top for Denton to chase it was a tasty little pass but Denton can't quite get up there with it and now Wolves have got the Wolves Watford have got the chance for a counter-attack but Diaby intercepts um, and plays it over the top for Skuck it's a lovely pass Skuck is in Skuck really should have scored He's had two very big chances in this game, but scored one that was harder than both of them. He should have a hat-trick at this point of this match. Barlow with another corner. It's another very good corner. I tell you what, Barlow can hit a corner. This is this is, this is news to me. He hasn't done it very much for us previously, uh, but he is looking very dangerous from these corners. Um, just to emphasise to everybody that we are the underdogs. But hopefully we'll find a breakthrough in this second half. It's Tanganga and he's redeemed himself. It's another set piece from Barlow who, I mean, the more the more well hit set pieces he delivers in this match, the more chance he's got of becoming a permanent fixture in this side because this is a lovely free kick. Um, and Tanganga gets the equaliser and I think we'll officially say that he has redeemed himself there. Um, it would have been nice if he'd have not done the stupid thing in the first half and not needed to, because obviously without the stupid thing, we'd be in the lead in the match now. So Tanganga still owes us two points, but at least he's sort of cancelled out the, the nonsense that he did early on. He's going to get himself sent off here, though, uh, because he was the man covering as Watford broke through. But luckily didn't end up having to get a challenge in. How is he on a 7.2? He's the best player in our team because he scored a header. Let's forget the goal that was conceded. He's still considered our man of the match because he scored a header. Um, Tanganga to Diaby. Tanganga again. All the way back to Hilson. Could have done that the first time, couldn't you? Hilson correctly plays it to Diaby this time. And we're knocking the ball around nicely, trying to build something. And then releasing Denton. It's the first action we've seen from him in the entire game. And it's a lovely, calm finish from Stuart Denton. A second goal of the season for him. I think that's the first the first bit of proper Denton action you've seen. He's another one of our young English contingent. We spent a lot of money on him in the summer. And there you go, starting to repay it with a beautifully calm finish. That's lovely to see. And it's Watford 2, Barnsley 3, with 20 minutes left to go. And as things stand, we are up into the top half of the Premier League table, which is a delicious position to find ourselves in. Oco Flex is going to come off here for La Chabala on the right-hand side. Gudja also looks like he could do with coming off, but looking at that bench, we have no central midfielders. So Gudja is going to be staying on. Um, I'm tempted to take off Tanganga because he's on a yellow card. And I just feel like this, his story for today is not complete yet, but he's, he's playing very well, apparently. So I guess I'll leave him on. We'll take Williams off and bring on Livramento. We could have brought on. So we've got all the right backs and all the wingers on the bench, apparently, but no, nothing else. One day, one day I'll start picking my own bench. We all know I'm never going to do that. One day I'll start picking my own bench. But that day is not to say, oh, another Barlow corner before we do a final substitution. Corner comes in. Um, it's another dangerous one, albeit I don't really know how that's led to a goal. Skuck's done brilliantly. The corner wasn't actually anywhere near a Barnsley player. But Skuck has shown some real determination and fighting spirit to turn that in. That's The initial corner, relatively harmless. Although it's in a dangerous area, it's that missed header that's caused all the problems for Watford. And this is just determination from Skuck. And I love it. That was brilliant. Right, let's, uh, let's make a final substitution. I'm tempted to take off Barlow just so he can get a standing ovation for his, his coming of age game. But I think, I don't think I'm going to, I think I'm going to, I might take off Pierre. No, see, I might not make a change. That would be, that would be new and different. Imagine me not making a substitution. I'm not going to do, I'm going to live life on the edge. I'm not going to make a substitution. 
I don't think I've ever done this before. It's all going to go wrong. I know it's going to go wrong. Le Chabala now charging down the right-hand side. Um, he's looked very dangerous in some of the games that he's played. He's very quick um, and dangerous in short bursts. I've started him a few times. And he doesn't look the same kind of threat. But when he comes off the bench, he does tend to cause problems. Moet, lovely, calm as you like from Moet. And Hilson, not making the same mistake as earlier, lumps it out, aiming for the fans. But Le Chabala keeps it in. And we've got a little bit of a counter-attack going on here. And here is Le Shabala looking dangerous. As I mentioned, he does. Cross comes in, it falls to Goodger, and we've scored number five. We've come away from home to Watford and scored five goals. This, this was not expected today. Watford two, Barnsley five, and... I think I think at this point we can safely say we've won this football match, which I wasn't expecting to do. But it's more points on the board. That gets us up to 13 points after nine games. And we're closing in all the time on that 40-point target that we've got. And arguably, more importantly, hopefully attracting some attention from some of... I mean, who are the bigger clubs who might be struggling at the moment? There isn't really... All the big clubs seem to have started quite well. I guess maybe Everton and Newcastle would be good moves. Was that disallowed for offside? I was too busy looking at the league table. I just assumed we conceded, but it looks like it's been disallowed. Um, Pieri, Tibalo, Denton. I want Skuck to get his hat-trick because I think it'll be a lovely confidence builder um, as he starts to establish himself in the Premier League. Barlow's there again, plays it forward to Denton. Denton plays Skuck in. Skuck, couple of attempts, and there's Le Chabala, and it's number six. What is going on? I'm not working the space. What is going on, guys? He's turning to work the space. My word. But that is, that's absurd that we've come here and scored six goals. Um, Denton involved again. Skuck involved again. Uh, Barlow was involved in the build-up. This front four is looking very dangerous. And their poor old goalkeeper is now down to a, a six rating. Um, Skuck still looking for his hat-trick. Um, but I, this this might be the the best the best performance we've had in this series so far for like a one-off match performance. I, I'm struggling to think of a better game that we've played. And there's Tanganga's red card. We knew it was coming. Thankfully, it's coming in the 95th minute and doesn't matter. What an afternoon he's had. <laughs> Creates their, their goal that puts them in the league. Heroically equalises. Watches us score six goals, then gets himself sent off. What a strange day that young man has had. Um, right, we'll drop Moe. In fact, I'm going to drop Skuck back because I think Skuck is a big lad. Hold on, let's just double check. Are you a big lad? Six, I mean, six foot. To me, short. Um, but we'll assume he's a big lad and we'll stick Barlow up front and just do that. For, I mean, it's going to, there you go, 15 seconds. It didn't really matter who we put at the back. Um, that was an excellent before. That game had everything. Red cards, almost own goals, weird, just weird. But most importantly, it had it had our young signings. Our summer was justified there because that was a that was a win made in that last transfer window we've just done, and that makes me very happy. Just the one change for the West Ham game. Then Panzo comes in for the uh, now suspended Tanganga. Um, lots of suspended. In fact, there's only one player. Stockbridge is now injured. Williams still injured. Um, Wood, Woodman is injured as well. So we've got our Barnsley's number one, Jamie Snedden, has made it up onto the bench. Uh, Tillman is now fit again. No, not fully match fit. Tillman had been playing very well in that attacking midfield role. Um, however, Barlow was awesome in that last game. So I'm keeping Barlow in. But if he doesn't start well, Tillman will be on because, as you can see, Tillman's starting to make it his own again as Goodger dropped back into, uh, into the central midfield position, which I think that's his place now. Q next match where yeah, I probably I've I've not played him there since this game and he's back in attacking midfield again and um, West Ham are bottom of the league interestingly so we've got an opportunity here to string some consecutive victories together I think did we win the game before the one we've just played as well could this be three Premier League wins in a row which would be absolutely sensational but there is West Ham bottom of the league um, although Southampton in fact not bottom of the league but Southampton have a game in hand on them so we'll be back to the bottom of the league when we beat them today and here is Goodger charging through like a proper box-to-box -box midfielder does and causing a little bit of uh, a little bit of issue for them overall they've got Kante in their midfield he must be so old now it's 2025 how old is N'Golo Kante in 2025 
I keep forgetting we're in 2020. That's still only five years in the future. I'm in my head. 2025 is still. Oh, I'm 15 years into this save, but I notice it when I'm England manager. It's basically the current England team, and um, we've given away a penalty here. Although it's gone to the little telly, but the penalty has been given, and there's a yellow card for Pierre. What is it with the? Yellow? I don't know why we're so poor at discipline this season. I've changed nothing about the tactic. I've not put on kick everybody really hard. It must just be. The players we've brought in are a little bit more aggressive than the ones that we had here before. And it is it is a problem because we have a constant... Right, there's always at least one player suspended every game. And that probably needs to stop. West Ham are in again here. If we go 2-0 down after, that, after the performance we've just put in against Watford, to then lose at home against a team at the bottom of the league would be just silly. Scuck is in here, though. It's done brilliantly, but again, it's straight at their keeper. I'm going to ask for some early passion. Just 24 minutes in. Let's have our 10 minutes now, boys and girls. Let's get out there and uh, grab an equaliser. Oco Flex, bigging him up before this game start, before the previous game. And he didn't really turn up. He'd been one of our, probably our best attacking player up until that last game when everyone else seemed to wake up. So hopefully today will be an Oco Flex day. Um, if not, we've got plenty of other options. We've got nothing, if not lots of attacking options now on the bench. And there is Oco Flex. I said we were looking for an Oco Flex day. And there he is. He wants one too. It's 1-1. One, one. It's a towering header at the far post. And it's that man, Aidan Barlow, again, delivering another beautiful set piece. I don't care how well Tillman was playing when he was in the side. And it is a little bit harsh on Tillman. But when you've got a man who can deliver a set piece the way Aidan Barlow is... You've got to fit him in the team somewhere, surely. We we might have a, a new superstar here, an assist machine. Um, Hilson plays it to Panzo. He's very happy there's no Tanganga ahead of him today. Moet playing it out to Oco Flex. It is Oco Flex day, remember. Ball over the top to Skuck. Skuck is in and Skuck scores. And it's a lovely finish. And after saying he was struggling to settle into life in the Premier League, um, he's decided today's the day he settles into life in the Premier League. Two goals in the last match. A goal already today. Yes, he's already missed a couple of big chances as well. I think he's just one of those kind of strikers. Or as people often tell me in the comments, it's no reflection on the striker that we've got it's an fm20 thing he could be the best striker in the world and he's still going to miss three or four sitters every game because it's the way fm20 works especially if those sitters are one-on-ones which the way we play they often are we store we score two types of goal really um the set pieces or the through balls that put us one-on-one -on -one, um guard against complacency I, very occasionally we'll have a long-range screamer but we don't really we don't really score like getting out wide and getting normal crosses in from open play very often. Denton to Skuck. Skuck trying to weasel it through. And Gudger was trying to score the third type of goal. We'd have had all three in one game then, and that would have been lovely. Barlow, another free kick. This time floating it towards, I don't even know who that is, maybe Skuck charging in um, to try and get on the end of that. But it's Oco Flex on Oco Flex day. Uh, Panzo out to Diaby. Diaby with the cross. Barlow is free. And that would have... That would have been the cherry on top of a lovely couple of performances from Barlow if he'd have scored there. Alas, he did not. And we've got a little bit of defending to do. But Panzo plays it all the way back to Hilson. And Hilson forward to Diaby. And we uh, we get an attack going again. And it's with Gudger, who's played it out to Williams, who's charging up on the overlap, beats his man, squares it to Skuck, and proves that we do occasionally score that kind of goal too. And that is a lovely finish from Skuck. Four goals in this episode now. And I think it's safe to say he has now arrived in the Premier League and maybe today he'll get his hat trick. He's got a little bit longer to work on it. That was really well played from Williams, just sort of skipping over the challenge that came in. And we've got to scroll up a little bit on here. We're up to eighth place in the Premier League as things stand, which is... It's very much nosebleed territory for Barnsley. On that previous screen, we don't have to scroll to get ourselves on the thing. We've always had to scroll in the Premier League. Barlow, back to Moat. Moat playing it forward to Oco Flex, who is... He, he wants another one. He doesn't want all the attention on Skuck on Oco Flex Day. Um, but it's uh, it's cleared, and now we've Panzo's pushed too far forward there. I can't even see him. Is that him up there, or is that Denton? Um, either way, we've conceded, and I do wonder where my left-back was. 
um, three two. It's one of those games, isn't it? We're we're a te- we've turned into a team that can attack but not defend, which is much more of a Kev style team. I'm comfortable with that as long as we're outscoring teams. Um, it doesn't really matter how we're winning our matches, I guess, as long as we're winning them. Um, Hilson now to Diaby. Diaby looking for that ball over the top, but instead finds Moet, who plays the ball, trying to release Oko Flex on this right-hand side. Um, but it was a little bit ambitious for him to chase. And Oko Flex never really looked like he wanted to chase it. And West Ham have got another attack on here. And Hilson makes the save. And this time, keeps hold of it. Proof that you can just catch a football. It is allowed. And look at, look at that, how it stopped the attack. Because you're holding it in your hands. They're not going to score against you if you're holding it in your hands. I should be a goalkeeping coach. Right, Moet is not having the best of games. However, as with the last game, we don't have a central midfielder on the bench. I guess Tillman could potentially come on and play there, but I'm not going to mess around doing stuff like that. Um, What we are going to do is take off Denton and we're going to bring on... I'm not going to put Hornby out on the left wing. That seems a little bit silly. We haven't played Chong for... And no, you know what? Tillman can go out there. Tillman was on the verge of being in the team. Um, So let's get him on, give him a little bit more game time um, as he recovers from his injury. Um, Oh, it wasn't Panzo's playing at centre-back, not left-back. It was Pierre who was out of position before. Um, He's on a yellow card and on a 6.6. I don't really like playing Livermento at left-back because I remember that very first game back in charge at Barnsley when, to be honest, Livermento was nearly three years younger. Um, but he did have a terrible time playing at left back and I've barely played him there since and now he's come on and he's injured. Cannot get a break with these defenders dropping like flies, but Tillman has a goal. He's come on, he's scored. It's it's from a uh, it's from a Barlow set piece again, this time with Diaby heading it back across goal. So cross comes over from Barlow. So dangerous with the free kicks. Diaby heads across to Tillman and it is a very tidy finish from Tillman and... Um, I think now we are going to take Barlow off just to get just to get him that standing ovation, and we're going to bring on not Hall. I think I'm bring on Chong. Stick Tillman in the middle. Chong can go out onto the left hand side. Chong is very much a fringe player for us at the moment. He's. Um, I'm hoping that he can have his start of the season where he's rubbish out of the team and then when he becomes a hero in the second half of the season we can just draft him in then I hope that's how it works rather than it being I play well once I've played 30 games because I'm not going through that again we can just get rid of him Um, but we've just won two games in a row in an episode we're obviously not going to win the next league game because that's against Manchester City but is that three Premier League game wins three Premier League wins in a row I could win manager of the month for October because we've won all three of our Premier League games we should beat Millwall we can have a 100% month. If I don't get manager of the month, I'm going to be disgusted. It's just, it's an unacceptable award system if I don't win that. Um, right, we're going to come back sometime around here. We'll do another six or seven games. Um, come back somewhere in here because then it gives us another six or seven game block to get January done. And I'm hoping in a couple of episodes time, by the time we're coming back for the Liverpool and Southampton games there... I'm hoping we've got a League Cup final to look forward to and we're safe in the Premier League. That would be the perfect next couple of months of this save. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Don't forget to check out Bourne tomorrow at four o'clock. Subscribe to the channel for Daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.